Hi guys, welcome back to another video on RabbitMQ. In the last video, we looked at some of the basics of RabbitMQ and its common terminology. In this video, we're going to write our very first simple program using RabbitMQ. In this video, we'll be using Python, but if you prefer to use .NET and C Sharp, please skip ahead to the next video as the content will be the same. Before we start writing our code, we'll give a brief introduction on what we are trying to achieve. All we are trying to achieve is to publish a message into our RabbitMQ broker from our producer and then consume that message from a consumer. So we will have a producer and a consumer. So the consumer in this video will consume its messages from a queue. So like we discussed in the previous video, the queue is like the post box for the consumer. So here's our queue and the consumer will simply listen to messages from this queue. We have to give the queue a name, and in this example, we'll call our queue letterbox. In RabbitMQ, we can never publish a message directly to a queue. It has to go through an exchange. In this very simple example, the exchange is not that important, so we can just use the default exchange, which is represented by a blank string. So the producer will push a message onto the default exchange. The default exchange will then push that message into our letterbox queue. And finally, as we've seen, the consumer will consume the message from the letterbox queue. So now we're gonna create our first RabbitMQ producer and consumer. We're gonna use Python for this and we're gonna create two separate Python files, producer.py for our producer and consumer.py for our consumer. We're gonna to need to install a package from pip to do this as well. The package is called pika and it's a RabbitMQ client library. So we can use this library to send or receive messages from our message broker. I'm using Visual Studio Code for this example, but you can use any IDE or text editor you're comfortable with to run the code. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a new terminal and I'm gonna install Pika. So I'm gonna type pip install Pika. And that should add the Pika package I need in order to run my code. Next, I'm just going to create a new file. So I'll click new file and I'm going to call it producer.py. This is where I'm going to write my producer code. So the first thing I want to do is I want to import the Pika library. So I'll simply just type import Pika. Next, I need to create a connection to my locally running RabbitMQ message broker. To do this, I want to type pika.connection parameters and I'm just running on localhost but if you were running on a real server you could enter the proper IP address or DNS name here and I'm going to save that in a variable called connection parameters so next I'm going to use these connection parameters to create a connection to my RabbitMQ broker. I'm gonna save that connection itself in a variable called connection. And I'm gonna say pika.blocking connection. I'm gonna pass in my connection parameters. So now that we have the connection, we wanna create a channel. Remember we said that you don't interact directly with connections, you interact with channels. And a connection can have many different channels. So again, we wanna create a variable to store our channel. And we want to say connection dot channel. This will create a channel for us. We don't need to give it a channel number, we'll just settle for the default. So now we've got our connection and our channel. What we want to do is we want to see how can we use this to send a message onto the broker. So the first thing we need to do is we need to declare a queue. So we can use channel.declare queue, or sorry, queue declare. And then we need to give it a queue name. So I'm just gonna call the queue letterbox. So now that our queues declare, we wanna publish a message to it. Now we don't publish a message directly to a queue ever. Everything needs to go through an exchange. But in this case, we're just gonna use the default exchange. So let's first define the message we wanna send. So say we want to just send, hello, this is my first message. 
And then we want to send this. So we want to send it on the channel, not the connection. And we just want to use the basic publish method. So basic publish. And we have to give it the default exchange. So that's just an empty string because we have to publish to exchange. But in this case, we're just going to use the default one. The routing key should be the name of the queue that we want to publish to. So in our case, we call the queue letterbox. So it has to be letterbox. And then finally, we want to give it the body of the message, which is the message we want to send itself. So that's in our message variable. And we'll just print off that we've sent the message. So we use F strings for this. We'll say send message. And then we'll say the message that we sent. And finally, the last thing we want to do in our producer is just close the connection. So we should be tidying stuff up after ourselves and not leaving connections hanging around. So that should do it for our producer. You can see all the code here. And I'll leave a link to the code on my GitHub in the description. So if anybody wants to clone the code for there or check it out there, please feel free to do so. So next we're going to create our consumer. So the consumer is what we're going to use to actually consume the messages off the broker. So the producer will push them on and the consumer will pull them off. So let's create a new file and call it consumer.py. And again, the first thing we want to do is import the Pika library. And again, the code here will be quite similar in order to establish the connection and the channel. So we can just copy that in from our producer. So again, we're connecting to localhost and we're using the blocking collection and creating a channel. So we can just copy that in. And also we're gonna declare the same queue in the consumer as the producer. It doesn't matter if the queue is declared twice as the RabbitMQ broker will know just to declare the queue once. It's what's known as an item potent operation. So we can declare it in both places and wherever the code executes first will actually declare the queue. The other place, it will just be ignored. So once we have the queue declared and the channel, we want to use the basic consume method in order to consume off the queue. So this method takes a couple of different parameters. The first one is the queue we want to consume off. And in our case, again, it's the one we defined earlier called letterbox. There's a couple of other parameters we need to specify auto act, which is basically saying, do we want to automatically acknowledge the messages? We'll set that to true for now. And finally, we need to give it a callback. So we need to give it something to do when it receives a message. So that is in the on message callback parameter. And we need to give this a callback. So we'll create a method up here. And we just call it on message received and that takes the channel the method properties and the body itself and for now we'll just print that we've received a message here so say receive new message and then we'll also print out the body of the message so we want to pass this method here as the callback into our basic consume. So now that we've set that up, we've created the channel, we've created the connection, declared the queue, we've called basic consume, we should now start consuming messages. So we'll just print off here. Started consuming. And then finally, we need to call channel.start consuming. So this is what will block and consume the messages. And every time it receives a message, it will call this callback here. Okay, so let's run this. So we're going to open a new bash terminal window and we're just going to run our consumer first. So we'll just type python consumer.py and we can see our consumer has started and it says started consuming. If we have a quick look in the RabbitMQ management UI, we can see some interesting things. We can see we have a connection here with the protocol AMQP091 with one channel. We can also see in queues that our letterbox queue has been created. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's open another terminal window and let's run our producer. So let's type Python producer.py and we can see we sent a message. Hello, this is my first message. And if we look at our other 
terminal window, we can see started consuming, received new message. Hello, this is my first message. And if we run the producer again, we should receive a second message. So again, we'll go do that and look back at our consumer. And again, we've received another message. Hello, this is my first message, even though we know it's the second message. So let's just stop the consumer for a second. So the consumer stopped now. And let's run the producer again without the consumer running. So we've sent another message, but there's no consumer running to consume it. If we look in the Rabbit MQ management client for our letterbox, we can see there's actually a message sitting in there that hasn't been consumed yet. So this is the message we just sent that hasn't been consumed. So if we go back and again start our consumer, it receives a message as soon as it connects because that was the message sitting in the queue. And if we just look back, that message now in the UI is gone. So that was a very quick first program in RabbitMQ on how to create a producer and a consumer in Python using the Pika client library. So thanks for watching this video, guys. In the next video, we're going to go through the same code, but using .NET and C Sharp. So as I said, feel free to skip that video if you've already watched this one and are happy to use Python. In the video after that, we're going to take a slight detour to look at the details of AMQP, which is the underlying protocol that RabbitMQ uses. If you enjoyed the video and want more RabbitMQ content, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.